Well, John, back-to-back victories. You had to grind that one out. What are your thoughts on the result and performance? Yeah, exactly that. We, we ground that one out. I thought we played really well in the first half and deserved our lead at half-time. We, we, I think we had the majority of the play and the majority of the chances. And I thought we were really solid defensively. So these are the games that you know you do have to grind it out, whether you go down to 10 men or not. It was probably a, you know, it was a difficult second half for us, although I thought we looked pretty good on the counter. And that's really important. I said to the, to the lads before the game, it was, it was the message from the coaching staff that we've got to come to these sort of places. We've got to pick up second balls. We've got to be fit. We've got to be strong. And we've got to keep going. And we've got to be relentless and not let them in the game. And, and if it's nil nil after 60 minutes, then it's not so bad. Home and away from home. And so that's what we want to build on. And so like you said, grinding it out, that was the most pleasing part of it. Picked up the first goal just before half time. How did that change your message at the break? It didn't. It didn't change it at all because the performance was there anyway, and we wanted to keep doing the same things in the second half. So the only thing was, um, yes, you deserved the, the lead, but uh, we're, we're we're back at nil nil again. It's a t- t- difficult mentality to come out and um, and actually have, but that that's that was the message really. All of the same things that, that we wanted to work on um, coming into half time because you know we have a quick chat with 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 Dan Zess and Joe just before we go back into the um, into the changing room. So they were all the same. Nothing changed because of the goal. Uh, we wanted to stay solid and, and make sure that we, we came out and produced again in the second half. Went down to 10 in the second half, a difficult moment. How did that change the game and how did you overcome it? Yeah, well, one of the things that we'd always like to do, even when we're 1-0 up or 2-0 or up, is, is get pressure on the ball. And, and going down to 10 men meant that we, we couldn't really do that without going um, sort of gung-ho. So uh, what we had to do is sit in and with two banks of four and Colby at first and then Joe coming on, just be really solid. Uh, so that's how you know, that's what changed everything, and, and that changes the dynamic. So if we had 11 men on the pitch, what we'd like to do most weekends is try and get pressure on the ball high up the pitch, so that when the balls do come in the box, they're easier for our defenders to deal with. Now, because Fleetwood were able to move it from side to side and, and gather a bit more momentum, it just meant we had to be extremely solid at the back and rely on our two centre halves and, and the full backs. And actually, when I look back at it, um, all all 10 left on the pitch just dug in, and, and they were really, really solid. Decided to bring Ronan Curtis into the eleven. How did he play? How do you think he played? I, I thought he was absolutely brilliant, and that is the biggest, the biggest disappointment for the night, the biggest blow. Obviously, we're losing Joe for for Saturday as well, but um, to lose Ronan for however long we will lose him is, uh, you know, is is gutting for the fans because I think they saw the Ronan of of old that um, we've we've we know so much about, and as an opposition uh, coach or player, I hated to play against. And he had the bit between his teeth, and, and I felt that uh, even as we were going on in the second half, I was kept looking over him, thinking, I wonder if his if his legs are going to blow up, and they blow up, and they didn't. He kept going and going, and unfortunately, he's just rolled his ankle. It's one of those you just there's nothing you can do. He's rolled his ankle on a decent enough pitch, working hard, and so just really gutted for him. And, and he's gutted in there because he knows he was he was feeling sort of close back to his best. Um, but yeah, we'll assess, we'll, we'll look at wounds, and, and go again. And the Pompey fans in the away end over there spurring us on to victory. How crucial were they this evening? Oh, absolutely amazing. I was, I was just stood out here during the warm-up and just <laughs> watching, the, uh, watching the, the seats fill up and, and, the, and obviously the terrace behind the goal and thinking, I know how long it took me to get up here <laughs> on, the, on the coach with all the, the lads and we paid to do it. So, yeah, not, not enough superlatives to, to describe that. And I think the, the performance was, was hopefully some, some reward for that long, long trip. I spoke to a couple of fans outside and I'm sort of saying, what are you doing tonight? You're going to be getting back at about four in the morning. But that, you know, that's why that's why fans do it. They, they absolutely love it. They'll they'll be here, win, lose or draw, come rain or shine. And that's essentially what everything's about. So, yeah, really pleased for the lads and really pleased for the fans as well. It's been your first away trip. How have you found it overall? Yeah, it's been great, actually. It's been good to probably get away from some of the madness of what went on over the weekend, which was absolutely fine. But it was such a whirlwind, as you know, coming in on Friday and not really having a second. So it's been nice to settle down, speak to a couple of the lads um, one-to-one, sort of see how they interact. That was one of the things uh, I just mentioned there, is that I know them all as players and and from what I've seen extensively uh, from coming into the job, but I I don't really know them as as people. I haven't really sat down and and spoken to them and, and see what makes them tick. So it was a really good opportunity to do that with the staff as well sit down and we've got a long coach journey on the way back to get to know each other a bit more and hopefully we'll, you know, we'll take advantage of that as well definitely an enjoyable, enjoyable trip back as well 
much more enjoyable. One of the messages before the game, uh, not that you, the lads needed any further motivation, but it's a long old journey um, back down south if we haven't at least put in a good performance. And um, and I genuinely feel this way if, if Fleetwood had managed to nick an equaliser or, or or a winner because of what had happened with Joe sending off. You know, I would have been gutted, but actually I, I know that the performance was there and sometimes things happen that are out of our control that, that end up you know, affecting the game. So um, it would have been really pleasing for me, but just, of course, the three points, uh, another clean sheet as well, which I'm really pleased with the back four and for Matt about. And again, actually, I catch myself saying that it's not it's not the back four. We all know that. I'm not being cliched. I, I think actually anyone that watched that game know it wasn't a clean sheet for the back four. It was definitely a clean sheet for everyone because of how hard they worked.